Welcome to week eight, uh, auxiliary views. So we've looked at uh, early in the semester, we looked at normal views. Normal views are once you pick the front view, everything is related to that. So we have the top and bottom and left and right, and back. Those are called normal views, the six normal views. Well, obviously you can look at a part from any direction and auxiliary views take up uh, any other direction that you look at a part is called an auxiliary view and there's an infinite number of them but there's typically not that many that make much sense so if we wanted to go to let me bring up the inlet part the inlet part is a good example of uh, using an auxiliary view Linux does not allow you to project off from a section view so I would have to go to this top view here Project, project a front view from it, such as this. And let me just move it over here for a second. And then from this, I could project this auxiliary view A here that you see. Let me turn on associative and then go up on an angle and let me. When it finds it, it turns it red. So that's how it create an auxiliary view. And then I would delete the front view and take my auxiliary view and project it off from the section view as if it came from the section view. So that's legal. But we can't project straight off from here. It doesn't give me the option. Anyway, what this gives me is the face of the inlet as a true view. So the height is correct and the width is correct. Over here, the, the width is correct, but the height is not, of course. So only from the auxiliary view can I correctly dimension uh, all these features. So that's the idea behind an auxiliary view. Make sure you read chapter 13. Look at the examples. Auxiliary views are orthographic views, so all... Uh, rules apply, you have hidden lines, you have <coughs> center lines. Okay, just another orthographic view. We have, for modeling on week 8, we have two parts to do, number 7 and number 14. And they look like the following. Now, I changed mine a little bit. I actually took and created a hole uh, in this one face that is perpendicular to that inclined plane so that when you look at it uh, from the from that plane uh, the circle the whole will look like a circle so this is what you want your week eight to look like let me sh let me update this there we go. so notice the hole in there on plane p you want to put your front view here your right side view to the right side and what we're going to do is we're going to project that projected view. We're going to project perpendicular to the inclined plane. Now to do this, you have to have associative clicked on. If you, if you don't have it clicked on, and by default it's not, it won't turn that inclined plane red. You notice it'll stay red a couple degrees either side. If it's red, when you click to drop it, it'll straighten it out though, exactly perfect. So your view, in this case, it says J, view J. And here's the view title. You may have to move these around a little bit to get them to work. You can put this anywhere along this projection line. The arrow can be moved so it's touching that line and the letter can be moved down closer too. Don't put the, the arrowhead or the letter uh, someplace where you don't want it, like on top of something. This is an auxiliary view. NX just calls it a view. Let's double click on that. And let's go to, let's label view, okay. Normally it'll start as a letter A and then go up one. B, C, D as you use it. Notice I've seen it, I've done it several times. Uh, the label itself where it says view, we want this to say auxiliary view. 
Oops, should be all uppercase. All text and working drawings is uppercase. There we go. So there. And then we put, as the directions tell you, put a TV on the plane that is true view. So this plane is true view, meaning the sides are all true length lines. So you can dimension any of those sides now because you're looking perpendicular to it. The other contour planes are actually all inclined or oblique. This one up here is oblique with a circle on it. And the rest are all inclined. For this one, if we add a projected view, now when you add projected views, it likes to snap to zero degrees. There you go, 90 degrees it snaps to. And it does snap to 45, and this one just happens to be at 45 degrees. So you can snap it up there, but make sure your associative is on so it turns color on you. And where is, there's my B, I'm using now. Well, it's a little bit slow today. There's B. Usually you always want your letter next to the arrowhead so you can see it. You do not have to dimension these parts this week. You should know how to. Let's see, where's my, my view over here? Again, double click on this thing and make it the auxiliary view. I have you do the auxiliary view for two reasons. One, so that you know what it's called, and two, so you don't uh, make the mistake of assuming that this plane is an auxiliary view. No, the whole drawing is an auxiliary view. The plane is called a true view. Don't confuse view and true view as being like a view, like a front, right, left side view. It's only the plane there. So I have you put a TV on there so you know which contour is a true view. And this allows you, in this view, if this uh, feature, this contour were uh, a critical feature and you want to dimension it, in this view you can then dimension, get it to stop here, there we go, oops. Sometimes it's a, it's kind of a pain to get the dimensions to work in an, in an auxiliary view. So let me see if I can get it to click. If you can just get it to click and drop in the right orientation, you can edit it later, move it in, whatever. So all these lines are true length, so you can dimension to them. Like that. And you can dimension to a circle. Will that give me a circle? I want a diameter. Sometimes you have to force a dimension to give you what you want. So under method, if I say diametral, then when I click on this arc, it will give me a something like that. Of course, your dimensions should always be horizontal or vertical if they're running vertically. But that shows you that you have, you can dimension things in an auxiliary view. Sometimes it's a bit touchy. Uh, you may have to, instead of inferred, uh, you may actually have to give it like a point to point or a perpendicular. If it doesn't work with just inferred, try something else. But if you play around with it long enough, you can get it to work. Okay. You should try that so that on week, uh, uh, week nine, we're having to test uh, next week from this week. So week nine is the test on NX. You have to be able to create an auxiliary view from a uh, from an inclined plane. So in order to create an auxiliary view of a plane, a primary auxiliary view, you need to first have uh, an orthographic view with that plane in edge view. Okay. And then you can project off and then get a true view. If you don't pick this view to begin with, then you're not going to get be able to get the true view. Make sure you watch the video on how uh, theory behind auxiliary views, which will be showing this. This is the second part. Again, I put a hole. And if you want to put a hole perpendicular to the plane, the two inclined planes, that's fine too. Uh, because when you get it correct, you'll then see the circle as a circle, not an ellipse. 
So this one is coming from here, and this one over here, add projected view. For each of the two parts, you have to do a projected view on both inclined planes. In this case, the inclined plane is actually three parallel lines, so make sure the parts are correct. And let's put that over there. So UF is this one. So pointed toward one of these parallel planes. Oops. Always keep your always keep your parts, your views, I should say, aligned with your other views. Okay, everything should project from one another. So notice this hole is perpendicular to the inclined plane, so the hole is round. You should put your true view, your TV on there. In this view, that one's true view. In this one, these three are all true view. So let me know that you know which ones are true view. Change your view names, of course, to auxiliary view, auxiliary view. Let me Anywhere you can put these on your sheet, they can be they can be crossing, you know, like this on the sheet, or they can be held down close to the part, like this, just so they're not on top of one another. So that's the two uh, auxiliary view, and uh, you want to put these in PDF files, of course, file export. PDF file, put them both one PDF file and email that to me. Okay, assignment two, make sure you watch the video on assembling an NX and troubleshooting that part and putting it together and then you'll do it. And then finally, continue with your final project. If you're doing like a blender, you should be taking it apart, uh, hand sketching every part, as many views as is necessary to correctly dimension every feature and then from your hand sketches try to model it. You'll probably find that as you start modeling you didn't put enough dimensions on so just keep adding dimensions to your hand sketches uh, but that's the fastest way most efficient way to create the model do the sketches first uh, dimension them and then you know create the model from them. Yes, hand sketches are mandatory. Uh, they are part of the final project. 